On the island of Tasmania, the worst massacre in Australian history is finally over. At least 34 people were killed and four others critically wounded. Armed with two rifles, an AR-15 and a 308 FN, Martin Bryant made his way through Port Arthur historic site, killing 35 people and injuring a further 23. Just 12 days later, the then Prime Minister John Howard pushed through a sweeping set of gun regulations despite a lack of support from his rural constituency. Within a month, the government passed the National Firearms Agreement, transforming gun legislation in the country. Certain semi-automatics and self-loading rifles and shotguns were banned, new licensing requirements were adopted and a National Firearms Registry was established. The law says Australians need a genuine reason for having a firearm, such as sports shooting or for agricultural use. It doesn't include self-defence. People must go through background checks and wait 28 days before they can buy a gun. The government also spent 375 million US dollars to buy back 640,000 civilian-owned guns and then destroyed them. After the gun law reform, the total number of homicides involving a firearm decreased by half. The total number of gun-related deaths fell rapidly as well, dropping more than half in 2016 compared with 1996. Australia didn't see a single mass shooting from 1996 to 2018, more than 22 years. However, anti-gun activists warned that following years of lobbying by pro-gun groups, Australia's strict gun laws have been eroded and gun numbers are almost back to the same level as at the time of the Port Arthur Massacre. Australia is not totally immune to mass shootings, but its response to the Port Arthur Massacre demonstrated how strong political leadership and strict gun control policies can help curb violence and save lives.